Stolman, world's greatest leather craft, saddle maker, artist, and teacher of leather crafts to the world, was born August 15, 1919, in the town of Olive in the Santa Ana Canyon in California. In addition to the many books you see here, the Stolmans, Al and Ann, produced hundreds of magazine articles, doodle pages, and other valuable aids for leather crafters. The most important work produced by the Stolmans was the recently published Encyclopedia of Saddle Making. Al graduated from high school in 1938 and three years later was called to serve in the U.S. Army's 46th Engineer Regiment. He was sent to the South Pacific and used his artwork ability to send sketches home by email of all his activities. It was in 1942 at Milne Bay, New Guinea, that Al first started doing leather craft. He liberated a one quarter inch thick piece of GI belting leather and fashioned it into a briefcase. He later made himself a fully tooled leather jacket with only a pocket knife and a few other crude handmade tools. After 40 months overseas, I was discharged and spent the next two years adjusting to civilian life. He settled in a shack in Laguna Canyon and made his home in an abandoned chicken house. Here he began carving leather to earn bead money. Most of his income was made from re reworking plain saddles into beautifully decorated specimens. I would buy a plain saddle at an auction, take it home, tool it outside on a rock and take it back to the auction to be sold at a profit. Later Al moved to a ranch in Hemet, California and his career blossomed. He carved and sold many magnificent works of leather. He traveled and demonstrated leather carving far and wide. In 1952, he created a leather picture of a Palomino wearing an ornate silver-mounted saddle. This attracted the attention of Dick McGann, who at that time was owner of the Craft Tool Company. He hired Al and his career in publishing and in designing tools was started. Al and Ann were married in 1963 and became partners forever. In 1969, they moved to Cache Creek in British Columbia, Canada and established the world famous Two Lazy A's Ranch. It was during the past 29 years at this location where the bulk of their work was created. In 1998, they moved off the ranch to a new home and workshop on Horse Lake near 100 Mile House in British Columbia.
Let's take this opportunity and let Al and Ann themselves in person from their home in Cache Creek in British Columbia tell us about their lives and times. Somewhere in British Columbia, and uh, I got a good treat for you today. I got Al and Ann Stolman here, and uh, we're just going to have a little chat about this and about that, about this and about that, just about anything we want to talk about. <laughs> but uh, I think, uh, for the benefit of all your fans around, they, 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 they're always asking me how, how did you ever get started doing other work? Well, I guess. Uh, I guess you could say it started during the war, uh, World War II. Civil War. Yeah. Yeah. Civil War. Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, no, my grandfather yeah. was in the Civil War. I got his powder on, as a matter of fact. But, oh, wow. But I've always been an artist. I've been blessed with being able to draw. And uh, my one of my main ambitions was I wanted to be a illustrator in Western books and magazines and that sort of thing. And uh, then the war come along. And I never got, never had an opportunity for that. So it wasn't until we was overseas in the jungles in Southeast Asia, New Guinea, and I'd seen the, some of the guys in the outfit was doing a little leather work, and that's when I kind of got interested in the leather. So uh, I started uh, making them wallets, you know, and and. Uh, I didn't have, I didn't know you had stamping tools or anything like that. Uh, I used my pocket knife to cut the design outline, you know, and then wet the leather, and then I made a bunch of tools out of nails and, and uh, to press the, press the leather down, you know, and get your design to stand up. And then take your arm and get aching so bad, you know, you couldn't do that to rest a while. And, and so, uh, and then for dyeing the background, I would use India ink and just mm -hmm. paint it in, you know, around. <laughs> quite, quite a mess. You know what's amazing about that? I, it never occurred to me before, but uh, Charles Tandy kind of got started in the business the same way. Yeah. World War II. Oh. He saw guys working on leather. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I guess, in, in fact, it was in the a v, or not the VA hospital, but the Navy hospital there in the in Hawaii, I guess, and then when he got out of the Navy, he started uh, thinking about, well, there's uh, there's a business here. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys kind of, yeah. I never realized before got started about the same way. I never oh, realized but, uh, Charles was no, into it. He never no. told us that. Well, he was in the Navy, uh -huh. uh, and uh, he was in the Pacific, and uh, of course he, uh, he sold war bonds, I guess, mostly. But, uh, he saw in the hospitals that uh, these guys were doing this leather work, and he came mm -hmm. home and told his dad, which at that time, we were, Tandy was in the uh, shoe findings business, he said, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a business there, and so they gave Charles a little corner of the business, uh, and he started doing uh, leather craft business, and it just went mm -hmm. from there. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, so I just thought it was right around the same time. Of course, uh, before that, uh, this business was pretty kind of secret, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. And the uh, worst of it was in the jungles there, with all the humidity, the leather would mold right away, mm -hmm. you know. 
and the moths would get in and eat stuff up and and I decided I was going to make myself a leather jacket, you see. Mm -hmm. I was getting real smart. And so when we came to Australia, I bought, bought some kangaroo lace and some calf skins mm -hmm. and everything, you know. And been packing that around all this time. And so what to do for a pattern to make this jacket. So I took an old army jack, uh, shirt and cut it apart, you know. Mm -hmm. oh, that was my pattern for the jacket. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'd rather drag that out and show it to you. Yeah. yeah, we ought to do that. I meant to have you get it out on the yeah. tools here. Yeah, we'll show you the tools. We'll, we'll do that after a bit. Too. Well, we can do that right now if you want. Okay. To. Why don't we do that? Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, here's the jacket. Uh, uh, that fits like, kind of fits like a suit of armor. This is the front and this is the back. Of course, I always have to do my putting my bucking horses on everything. Mm -hmm. This is a kind of a wild rose design. And the, uh, turn around the front again, the, the uh, conchers are all made out of Australian coins on here, and uh, the lapel has a lining in it, a leather lining. And you notice on these seams, on the, on the sleeve seam, there's a, a Double, a double seam there. It's laced around the edge with the kangaroo, and uh, then it's also like a buck stitching with another seam. Now I didn't know anything about lacing or lacing punches or anything, so I thought you had to actually take the leather out, the thickness of the lace. So I took two hacksaw blades and ground them down the width of the lace and wired them together. And then I punched the double slips at each end, and then to get the leather out, I used a little tiny nail and cut the ends out of each slot. So where the laces go in, there was a little slot actually taken out of the leather. So you can imagine all the, all the little slots and everything going down those seams. <laughs> you know. <laughs> How about a glutton? <laughs> <laughs> How about some of those tools? Do you have that uh, those old tools there, Al? Oh, wait a minute. What do well, we got here in the pocket? I can show you the inside. The oh, okay. Let me zoom line. in on that. Yeah. Just hold it there. I'll come yeah. to you. Okay. There we go. Yeah, so we put some pockets on the inside. And the Leo on there, that's me. I was born under the Leo sign. And over on the other side, the other side we have a, have a jungle scene here from, from New Guinea. Maybe you can get that on there. I got it. And that's all pressed in with the nails and everything and dyed with the and the ink. And the lining in there, when I, I didn't have that when I brought the jacket home after the war, I took it to a tailor and wanted him to sew a lining in it, but he wouldn't have any part of it, so I had to do it myself all by hand. <laughs> <laughs> so I the tools that I made over in New Guinea. And uh, this one here is made out of a nail, and that's the original pointed beveler. There was no pointed bevel before this one came out. And this is a little border design stamp, and this is a kind of a little background tool to press in. And this was a real fine modeling tool, high class, real fine. And this was a dandy one here. This was made out of a spike, and it's got a big modeling surface. And this is my background stippler. It's made out of a half a dozen little uh, finishing nails that are drove into a dowel and wired together with a piece of wire. And that's what all of my leather work was composed of, with this type of tools. <laughs> Your pocket. Saddle maker now. Do You're you the best saddle maker I ever heard of or know of. How did you ever get started well, making saddles? I would say that. <laughs> huh? But I got started making saddles, uh, I guess, uh, after the war. Uh, uh, before the war, of course, I didn't know anything about making saddles, but I was riding all the time, and I had a, a good saddle that was made in uh, Deming, New Mexico, by a saddle maker named Williams. And uh, when I went to the war, or my sister had all of my stuff, she kept the saddle and had all my belongings. And I was overseas so darn long, almost four years, that I didn't think I was ever coming home, and people were, kept wanting to buy that saddle from my sister, you know, and so I thought, well, I don't know when I'll ever get home again, so better go ahead and sell it. So she sold it, and then when I got back from the war, 
then you uh, you couldn't uh, you couldn't buy a saddle anymore. See, the mm -hmm. times were times were that oh, way. That's right. Yeah. So uh, I got a saddle that was made in Mexico. They were making saddles patterned after our Western saddles in mm -hmm. Mexico. The only problem with it was. Uh, the shearling on there was just like it come fresh off the sheep. It was oh, gray and still had the stickers in it. Oh, that was like sheep dip. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, and the leather was oh. tanned in the human feces, you know. Yeah, yeah. And when that sucker was out in the hot sun for any length of time, it just kept smelling something awful. Especially if it got wet. <laughs> yeah. So then uh, I had a. I was living in a shack in a canyon there near Laguna Beach, California, and, and a friend of mine lived in town there and he didn't know who owned the property or anything and I didn't either but I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And my brother-in-law had an old chicken house he wanted to get rid of so I tore that down and made myself a shack down there. I, oh, yeah. I didn't have enough boards to finish the back end in. It was all chicken wire halfway up, you know, but I did have a roof on it. Mm -hmm. And then he was a horse trader and he would go into the Los Angeles uh, once a week or so trading horses. And when he was in there, I I would buy a plain saddle, okay. and then we'd come back to my shack, and I'd ride his horses during the week, you know, and fool around with them, and then I'd take this saddle, and I would tool it up, see. Did you have some regular tools then in those days? Uh, no, I still had my, uh, that, that I didn't know anything about the homemade stuff. Yeah, yeah I didn't know anything. <laughs> and I didn't even take saddle apart, eh? I just, oh, okay. like underneath the seat, I'd take a tin plate and shove up under there to press against it, you know, and that yeah. sort of thing. And then the next week, I'd uh, take saddle back and sell it and buy another plain saddle and bring it back to live it. Yeah, mm. so that's how. I kind of got started, and then when I go into rodeos, and I'd see a saddle oh, with that beautiful looking design on it. So I'd get a piece of paper, and nobody's looking in a pencil, and I'd there <laughs> on and rub off to get a design. <laughs> then I found out, I got in the saddle shop one day, and I saw a guy using stamps and a mallet, and all these <laughs> tools, and all of a sudden the wheels started yeah. going. <laughs> they tell him uh, when you went to work for McGee and Thing that Guy Larabah. Oh, that's the old original yeah. craft tool guys, wasn't it? Uh, Dick McGam. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I've met Shaft. Shaft. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. you went for Handy. Yeah. Well, uh, I stayed in this shack down there. Um, I don't know, a uh, little over a year, I guess, and I didn't know what I was going to do with myself. One day, a fellow come up the hill in a suit, and. Uh, I was cooking out on the rocks, you know, and had horses running all over, and he'd come up and he had a suit on there. He said, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I said, nothing. He says, well, whoa, 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 what's all these horses? He says, what, what are you doing here? And I said, nothing. And he says, well, I said, don't you know you're trespassing? He said, you're on my property. And I said, well, I'm not hurting anything. And uh, well, he said, uh, he says, I could, I could have you locked up. He says, you're, you're trespassing on my property. And I said, well, it not make you feel any better. I said, well, go ahead and lock me up, you know. But uh, he said, well, I got some people coming down here tomorrow to look at this property. He said, can you be off of here by then? I said, yeah, I'll be gone. Uh, and I knew a rancher up the canyon a ways, and he'd always offered to let me put my shack there yeah. to look after his horses down in the back. So, Moved the shack up there, and heck up there, I even had a floor in it. Didn't you? Really? Yeah, a little wood stove and the pipe going up. That was first class. So then I got tired of another year of that, and I didn't know what to do with myself. I went to work for a dude ranch up in the mountains, and then um, I was making belts and everything, you know, but I didn't even know how to finish the edge on the piece huh. of leather. Yeah. And, and so uh, I said, this, this isn't going to work, you know, I've got to learn. So I uh, went down. And to the saddle shop, asking for a job, you know. Mm. And the old man, uh, Lauterbach, the fellow that was a saddle maker there, he didn't do any decorative work at all, but he made good stuff. Saddle. I won a certain amount of money, and no way, you know, wasn't worth that kind mm -hmm. of money. They wasn't paying anything, you know. Huh. So if he, they, we finally settled on a wage. I think it was sixty-five dollars a month or something mm. like that. And I wanted to learn to make saddles, but first uh, he said, you know how to hand sew? And I said, oh, yeah. So I showed him some of my work. 
I show it here, you know. There's yeah. a big course, five forty. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so uh, about six months, I had to uh, uh, repair suitcases and so on mm -hmm. and everything, learn to use around my canal. I finally got where I could start on the saddle, and so I didn't think the day'd ever come when I could do it all alone without having to ask questions. Yeah. Because he always told me if you make a mistake, don't try to cover it up, I'll find it. So I'd go home at night and lay awake all night, remembering everything he told me. So I finally got to work the next show. Nice. All right. Well, that's a, that's a great way to get started. <laughs> and uh, you're a good sound maker. You're a great sound maker. <laughs> well, uh, how did the, the two of you uh, get together? Oh. Hmm. Oh, I was on a demonstration trip for Craft Tool Company after the saddle shop. I went to Craft Tool work yeah. there, and I was on a demonstration trip up in Bakersfield, California. And I had some friends that lived up in the Sierra, and they had invited me to come up there and visit them over the weekend. You see? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, so after this demonstration, I went up there and uh, stayed over their place, and uh, and Ann was up there with some other friends that. It was the opening of fishing season, and I was oh, up there okay. fishing. She's up fishing. Um, so I was supposed to put on a demonstration that evening of weather, okay. you know, at our yeah. friend's house. And, and so these other people were coming over, and you can tell them what happened well, over in their house. Um, they wanted to know if I was going to go, and I said, not particularly. I didn't know anything yeah. about leather work. And uh, so they were shocked, you know, haven't you ever heard of Al Stoneman? And I said, no, and I'll bet he's never heard of Van McDonald either. <laughs> so we got off to a good start. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so, uh, I did go over. <laughs> and, uh, so he, uh, Al turned you into a saddle maker and you turned him into a, a fisherman. fisherman. Right. Oh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. She made my saddle, as a matter of fact, the one I'm riding yeah. today. Yeah, how about that? His old uh, saddle was just plain and I said, no. No good saddle maker where it ride anything like that. <laughs> Plain <laughs> yeah. Well, this uh, this artwork you got into and in, in, in the writing of books, uh, who was your first contact there? Well, that's when I was working for McGain at the Craft Tool. Dick company. McGain at yeah. Craft Tool, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that was the first book I ever put out. That was uh, which one? Uh, that, uh, How to Carve Leather. How to Carve Leather, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I have that one. Yeah. 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 And then the next couple, I guess, you did uh, for Stylecraft. Is that true? The uh, How to Make Holsters and the Belts Galore? Yeah, I had made another book or two, I think, for McGann. One was figure carving. I think that's discontinued now. But yeah, that's yeah, then I, I stayed there two years, and I just couldn't take city anymore. So yeah. I moved mm -hmm. up. And then uh, I went to uh, Stylecraft at uh, yeah, Arizona. In Arizona. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Al Green. Al Green, yeah. 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 And that was the uh, how to make the holsters book and about the first pattern. And Matter of fact, that's mm -hmm. when you met Harry, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Harry. In, yeah. Uh, in Phoenix. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I haven't seen the old boy since. Yeah. Yeah. That's a long time ago. It won't be long. He. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. He'll be up here in September. And uh, I'm going right. to bring his uh, shovel and crowbar, and we got a lot of fence to build. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. He needs to do a little work. <laughs> So you guys have been married now how long now? Mm, since 1963. 63. 28. Coming 29. Coming on to 30, 29, 30 years, yeah. yeah. And uh, you start dressing alike every day? Uh, when well, uh, when uh, she uh, began making shirts. Yeah. Okay. How long have you been making shirts now? Since the first year we were married. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was hard to fit, and we couldn't ever find any shirts that would fit him. He has a long torso. So I said, well, I'll see if I can and, make shirts. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She makes the shirts now with uh, the flat seams. You can't hear the flat seams. You can't uh, oh, they don't yeah. do them like that anymore, mm -hmm. see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they don't tear apart right away. And so when she started making the shirts, we well, then we always get the yeah. same material. Yeah. Yeah. That way when they get in the crowd, we don't get lost so easily, you see? <laughs> <laughs> And so you've been uh, up in this cabin now since uh, how long? In your, uh, mm, I see. Nineteen sixty-nine. We bought the place in nineteen sixty-six. Sixty-six. Yeah. yeah. And then three years later, we moved up here. Moved up. Mm -hmm. 
69, we had, I drew the plans for the house and we had a contractor build it. And he was supposed to have it done for us to move in that fall. And we come up in uh, August. We came up in July to see if the house was going to yeah. be ready. So when we got up here, we had to finish paneling and put in the season and a few other things and then get our winter wood in and get a sense for that. So, but we've been here ever since. And you do uh, you do all the work right in, yeah. in this uh, yeah. in this house. Yeah. Yeah, at first we had everything, our big bench here and everything in the living room. You couldn't even find a chair to sit on without moving some leather or something. And we needed more room, so one summer we took off and built this shop on the end of the house, uh, 16 by 20. And we did all this work ourselves, except for the electrical wiring we had because of the codes and all. We wanted it done correctly. And, uh, and you built your own water supply up here. Uh, pardon? You got your own water supply yes. off yes. the mountain? Yeah, we have a brook that runs on our property, starts up the hill behind the house and runs down the hill. And we just tapped into it up there and it comes down the hill, gravity feed. And there's no pumps, no electricity, nothing to wear out. Nice clean water. It's hard water, though. Hard water, yeah. yeah. Okay. It has a lot of alkali in sure. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when well, all of yeah. these trees out here that you see, when we they had the house built, there wasn't a tree right up here at oh, all. Oh, okay. Did no. you uh, plant those trees or just let them grow after? Uh, uh, the cotton was, uh, God planted those. We had a little bit of dog fence along there one year and the seed blew in there, I guess, and when the leaf came out of the ground, we started watering it. Okay. <laughs> but all the others, the elms and the spruce trees and those, we planted those since we've been here and they've really taken off. And without that, we just cook in here, you know. Yeah, yeah. Before oh. we had any trees or this shop, we did all of our work in the living room. See, we have the big, these big windows. And when it'd get hot in the summertime, that would hit that roof and it'd get so hot in there you couldn't work. So if we went outside and that's when we built the front porch when it was so hot you couldn't work inside. That kept a lot of the heat off the front oh, building. Yes. Yeah. 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 Boy, and that lumber, you'd, get, you'd have to nail it down fast because that heat would get through and you'd start curling up Curl and go back where it came from. <laughs> you'd hear it screeching and pulling on the nail. <laughs> well, is there anything else you'd like to show the people here now that, we, uh, that we're here? We can. Uh, I know you were telling me about this picture over here of the guy you learned saddle making from. Uh, uh, would you like to show that and tell them a little bit about it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can do that. Okay. Now uh, this is a uh, carving I done, uh, I think in 88. Uh, it shows uh, Shap Le the Shap Leather Company shop where I learned to make saddles. And uh, this was taken from a photograph that was taken in 1948. And, uh, I enlarged it up and made it into this leather carving. And this old gentleman here, Mr. Guy Lauterbach, he's the one that taught me how to make saddles. And this is uh, Al Stolman when he used to have a little hair on his head yet. And uh, this is the way we were in there making the saddles. Now this is all, uh, the scene is made out of different embossed leather parts. Uh, Mr. Lauterbach is separate uh, and the saddle is separate. So I'm separate here from the other hand and everything. And the pipe in his mouth is even a separate piece. The, the, the uh, stem of the pipe is made with a pin and it's covered with real fine leather. I scarved the leather mm. just, just uh, thinner than scarver leather and then put that in his mouth. And the eyeglasses are made out of clear plastic and they have their bifocals and <laughs> we show how to do that in the, Figure carving mm -hmm. and finesse, I believe it is. Figure carving finesse, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. the uh, eye shade is made out of out of the clear plastic, and I used uh, just straight uh, uh, spirit dye, green, and mm -hmm. to give it the green shade that that's shown there. And the little uh, overstitch wheel there is uh, made out of plastic and then painted with the Zoe's silver, and. Uh, and the rigging rings and that are painted with his old silver too. And it's all lightly embossed, so it gives it a little raised effect. And, and we want to use a color picture of this in our upcoming uh, encyclopedia of, 
the title making, where uh, you know, this will be on a fold-out page, the actual size it is, and we want to dedicate this book to Mr. Guy Lauterbach because uh, he's the one that taught me how to make saddles, and I'm the one that taught him how to make saddles. And now we're getting ready now, to teach the world how to make saddles. We're going to try to teach you how to make saddles. Let's see, Al and Ann, you guys are working on the, uh, the everybody's anticipating the <laughs> encyclopedia of saddle making. And, uh, yeah. See, you got a couple saddles there. Uh, yep, these, you tell us uh, a little bit. Uh, these two, we have four. We'll have four saddles in the book, and this is this is the number one saddle. And uh, each saddle will have a different horn and a different fork and a different handle and a different. Uh, rigging style in here so that we show, we show all different methods of doing it. This is an in-skirt rigging and this is a stand. And this one has the front turned under and scalloped and tacked and this one has a roll on it and this one has the laced swells and this one has a welted swell. This one has a regular binding and this one has a Cheyenne roll binding and so we try to give you the most uh, variance in, in, uh, in the four saddles to give you more experience in the different methods of construction. And, uh, well, I've seen just a, a few pages of the, of the rigging, and uh, I can tell you that I was just amazed <laughs> at how much, uh, how much information there was there just on rigging, and uh, it's going to be that way, I'm sure, throughout the whole encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many uh, pages are we uh, up to right now? Well, we have a total of about 675 so far. And we're going to break it down into three volumes, which the, each one will be in the neighborhood of 225, more or less, one way or the other. And that'll make a, make a little better balance out of it and easier to handle and more affordable to people. But we're, uh, we're not shying away from any information. We're just letting it go as as long as it is gone, so we, so we don't omit anything, because there's so much to cover, and like with the trees, how to fit them on the horse, and how to measure the horse for, to make the saddle tree fit, and why some horses get sore backs, and why others don't, and the reasons for it, and something that people will learn to look, at, look out for. Well, and then, too, and basically we're not uh, giving stamping instructions, so... No. Not, uh, it's just this is the fanciest one of the lot here you might say it's mm -hmm. a, it's just a, a simple inverted border silhouette design that's stamped in and then dyed with the silver and this is just a plain old border design but but from this uh, you could learn how to get your borders and you do your own work inside of here we show you how to get this part of it and then you you wanted to go ahead and do a full flower job you could go ahead and do it Oh, we've got plenty of other books oh, done yeah. by Alan and Stolman yeah. that told us how to do uh, the, uh, the tooling and the, yeah. and the coloring uh, and of course yeah, the uh, stitching and right. the buck stitching and how to take care of your tools and what kind of tools to use. And, uh, there's just no end to the instructions we've already got, so you can be pretty much a specialist here, I believe, in, in saddle making. Oh yeah, you can apply it to everything. Mm -hmm. Basically here our main concern is a construction to get the basics in. So to get this established in your mind how to put a good solid rigging in there and how to, how to properly uh, install the ground seats and everything and the horn covers and just get the basics and then once we have all that we can go to future volumes and give you all the silver rope roll stuff and the uh, mm -hmm. filigree jobs. Oh there's a multitude of things to do yet. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, when I first was making saddles, um, talk about finding designs any place, I was looking through the belt book one time, and there was a little border stamp, and I thought, you know, that would look pretty good on the saddle. I ended up with three or four saddles, and I got the designs well, of that belt. So. That was an Indian uh, design motif. You know? mm, okay, yeah. 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 So, designs so are where you find them. Tooling patterns everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, uh, it's been boy, great to have you, George. Pleasure seeing you. Yeah, well, it won't be so long next time. Uh, now, it's been a real pleasure. You bet. Mm -hmm. real pleasure. I hope I haven't wrecked too much of your film. Nah. <laughs> well, first of all, it's not film. 
Oh. It's oh. videotaped. You know, we keep calling it film, but I have to have people remind me it's not film. It's videotaped. Yeah. Shows you how old he is. Him or me? Him. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, well, it's your pleasure. At least uh, you could come up. and. Uh, yeah. It's too mm -hmm. bad the weather's so hot as it is, but it isn't mm -hmm. as bad as it is. It makes you feel at home. Makes me feel at home. <laughs> yeah. Well, they call me a Texan, but we won't get into that. That's <laughs> another day. Okay, well, say goodbye to everybody, okay. and uh, we'll see you next trip. Yes. See you next year.